My name is John Yesterday. Yours too. Look at your left hand. If you have a scar like this one, then you've lost your memory. So let me bring you up to date. You are more than 500 years old. In 1501, the priest Hines de Orduña made you go through an alchemic transmutation, which makes you come back to life again each time you die. But when you resurrect, your body returns to the age and state that it was in when you first died but you lose your memory. Thus, the email and this video. Three years ago, your girlfriend Pauline was transmuted too. When she dies, she comes back to life just like you, but with an advantage. She doesn't lose her memory. Look for her. Start here. In the meantime, if you want to know more about your past, visit this page. John? Yes. Are you awake? No. Again? moving in your sleep. Nightmares? Yeah, sort of, I guess. Honestly, no. No, I'm sure they're not dreams. But my 
actual past lives. At least you're recovering your memory. Yeah, right. The bad news is that it's always the same piece of memory, as if I were blocked at a specific point. Your friend the sacrilegious pig again, huh? Yep. Would you please stop dreaming about hogs while sleeping with me? <laughs> but I'm hog wild about you, dear. Something new about the coin? No. I think the events in my dream all happened before everything related to the coin and the transmutation. Is Boris coming to work today? Yeah, at noon. You told him to clean the van before he comes. Oops. Forgot. You think you're the only one who can have amnesia? Ha ha ha. That's not fair. Are you gonna take a shower? Nope. Took one last night before bed. Good. Because I need to use the shower again.
my birthday. Come down quick! I'm double parked. Come on! I gotta tell you something. You're never going to believe it. Okay, you convince me. Thanks, John. I'll take pictures of the sculpture and look for its documents. And me? John, you Google that collector just in case. Victoria Baxter, right? Yes, and me? Maybe we could give her a little gift to make a good impression. Well, as long as you take care of it. And me? You'll come to Baxter's house with me. If what you say is true and tomorrow, She's leaving on a trip. We must be quick. But now park that van. You're breaking the law. Yeah, no more tickets, Boris. Happy birthday. Tomorrow, you'll receive a parcel from me. A set of micro cameras with mics. Incredibly small. There for you to set up a little security system in your shop. You have things I'm interested in, and I don't want to see you get robbed. John told you to park the van. Yes. Are you doing it? That's something I'm debating with him. You'll pay the fine next time, okay? Seems fair, boss. Did you take the van to the repair shop? You told me to go today. But the Baxter thing is more important, isn't it? Yes, but... I'll take that as a thanks, Boris. Happy birthday. Are you sure you got it right? You sure she's interested in the Neo sculpture? She said she had a soft spot for Japanese carvings. And as far as I know, ours is a marvel, isn't it? Ours? Yours. I can't find the nylon hammer. I have it. Why? None of your business. You want it? Give it to me. Sure, boss. Happy birthday! I want you to stop calling John Choke. Okay. But his name is Choke! 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 Choke, 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 choke! Stop it, Boris! Okay. End of argument. Choke.
Chug, 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 chug. John. Hey, do you have the SD card? Nope, but let me look for it. You already know what gift to give the collector? No, not yet. But I'll get an idea from the info I googled about her. I can't stand him calling you Choke. Why can't he get used to your real name? Because Choke was... I was... The first good thing that happened to him after he lost his son, and he went mad. Give him some time. We've talked about this a lot of times. He's a bad worker, he costs us money, and we don't need him anyway. I won't leave him again, Pauline. I promised him I'd take him out of the madhouse, and I did it. But now if I leave him in the street, what'll become of him? You should see how he treats me when you're not around. I don't know, maybe he's jealous. Jealous? He only has me. He says, happy birthday, more and more. He's getting worse. I wouldn't say that. I find him more centered. I mean, it's been months since he phoned the police to ask them about his son. Yeah, now he just looks for him on Facebook. Are you sure that Baxter is interested in the Neo? I know you're fond of the sculpture, but I think of it as a chess pawn. We lose it to save the shop. And of course she'll like it. According to Boris, she loves Japanese carved sculptures. And she won't find anything as good as our Nyo. I guess you're right. But there's less and less of my father here. You look strange today. Is it because of the nightmare? No. Yes. I don't know. It's like my memories are trying to tell me something. But what? When you die, you resurrect, but your body comes back to the shape it was in when you died for the very first time, and without any of your memories. So, although you had that scar erased with laser surgery, it's going to appear again if you die. Your best girl, thanks to her, you've got a very worthwhile present. If the scar on your hand comes back, go to her and do whatever she tells you to do. You work at the antique shop that Pauline inherited from her father. Years ago, when you were known as Choke, you went crazy and lost your mind and ended up living in a derelict metro station in New York where the psycho found you. Down in the Cadway metro station, you made friends with another crazy street person. He was as nutty as you were. And what drove him crazy was that he couldn't accept the death of his son. Years later, you got him out of the loony bin they put him into and brought him to Paris, where he works with you and Pauline now. The crazy tycoon wasn't alone. He had a hunting dog who did everything he was ordered to do. 
three years ago, a totally crazy millionaire found you at Cadway, and he discovered that you were an immortal, and so he used you to become one himself. White killed you, and when you resurrected with no memory, he lied to you. He gave you a false life, a false past, a false career, even a false mother. Yet, although White manipulated you into finding the potion of immortality, you also discovered some things you weren't supposed to. When that happened, like at the Hotel Doré in Paris, he killed you. And when you came back, he manipulated you again, making you start all over again. The last time that psycho killed you, he made you swallow mercury. That was a little mistake, because from then on, you started to remember small pieces from your past, which helped you to finish with him. Your findings led you to the ruins of the Church of St. Fergus in Scotland, where you remembered how you were made an immortal, and where you threw the psycho into a well. Hines de Ordunia founder of the Order of the Flesh, transmuted your body in 1501 so you could return from the dead. However, he excluded one of the ingredients from the potion of immortality, mercury, without which you come back without your memory. The weirdest thing is that Hines was in your dream. You met him as a boy. The coin of judgment is the main ingredient of the potion of immortality. You believe that if you can find one, you'll be able to undergo the same ritual, this time with Mercury, so that in the future you won't lose your memory again. A mysterious blind master appears in your dreams, but only there, because his name is not in any history book. You don't even know in which era you met him.
Hey, Boris. Say joke. You haven't parked the van yet? Nope. I'm gonna finish up with something first, and I'll get to that in a jiffy. What something? Surfing Facebook. It's important. Did they send you the results from your last checkup? Nope. Did I tell you he hit my knee with a little rubber hammer? It was crazy. My leg went boing, and I laughed my ass off. <laughs> now, I do it all the time. Boing! Boing! You try it. About this TV show, you know, the one where you saw Victoria Baxter? Which TV show was it that Baxter was on today? One with famous people nobody knows. They're having breakfast with journalists who don't know what they're talking about. And no one sees because they're on at a time when everyone's still snoring. Are you sure she said she was looking for a gnoc? No, no. They asked her what she'll do now that she lives in Paris. She said she'd make a sweep of the antique shops in the city in search of Japanese art, which I have a soft spot for, especially for the carvings. Did she happen to mention anything about her love for tobacco? No. Wait, yes. When they asked her how she liked her breakfast, she said, it's even better than the French standards. Happy birthday. Only a good pipe could improve it. Why were they interviewing her in the first place? Because they didn't have anyone else, I guess. <laughs> but they said she is one of the most important collectors in Europe and wants to start her own little Japanese museum in Paris. How much do you think we can ask Baxter for the sculpture? Oh, what a nuisance. But don't tell the boss I helped you, okay? Date? Origin? Author? It was made by Unke, the most highly valued sculptor from the K School in Japan at the end of the 12th century. Conservation state? It was in very bad shape, but Pauline's father, he did an amazing restoration. Around 600,000 euros. Happy birthday! There's something I need to ask you about our previous life in New York. Oh, Choke, really? Again? I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris, but I'm certain somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. Now tell me again, how did we meet? I was in the station, sitting on a bench, waiting for... you know. I know. You sat beside me, not saying a word. You offered me half a sandwich. I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris, but I'm certain somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. I started to think that the demolished station was a church and that we were members of the Inquisition. Why did I think that? No idea. You talked a lot of nonsense. I liked that, because you were acting crazier than me. <laughs> and you got food and things for us. I know we've talked about it a lot, of, but I'm so... Oh. Do you think I could ever become Choke again? Well, Choke, you still are Choke. Younger, but time will change all that. You are less crazy, though. We're both improving, aren't we? I know we've talked, but I... Oh. What exactly was it like? when you saw me die, and then resurrect for the first time. I laughed my ass off. Ah, I thought, so all that nonsense about eternal life is true. <laughs> I know we've talked about it a lot of times, but I... Oh. Do you have any idea why I went to that station in the first place? You were sure that Cadway was related to Cadwallader and that Cadwallader had something to do with the Inquisition and someone with ginger hair. You never told me that before. Maybe. Or maybe you've just forgotten that I have. I know, we but I... Oh. I thought I asked you to buy ink for the printer. And I did. But there's no ink in the printer. But you asked me to buy it. That's all. Logical. Okay. So would you be so kind as to give me the ink cartridge for the printer, please? With pleasure, Choke. Just ask me. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs>